guys today I'm going to be showing you how to make this hat here so this one I made in a white velvet yarn with a pink fur around it and then the one in the video that I showed is made with a pink velvet yarn with a red fur here Alright, to get started, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to slip stitch to that first chain that I made. So to slip stitch, I put my hook through that first chain and pull the yarn both through that chain and through the loop on my hook. And that was a slip stitch. And what that did was create a ring here, and sometimes you have to kind of pull it apart to be able to properly see it. But we're going to work our stitches into the center. And at this point, you want to chain one, and that chain one does not count as a stitch. And we want to do 12 double crochets right into that center space there. So working right into it, we're going to do 12 double crochets. So there was one, and that space there will become more obvious the more double crochets that you do. There's two, three, four, five, and if you have to kind of move them over as you go to make more room, feel free to do that. But once I have my 12 double crochets done, I will come back on and we will go on to round two together. All right, I just completed my 12 double crochets, and at this point, if you pull on that tail, it should close up that center gap a little bit more, so that worked very nice on mine. If yours doesn't close up enough, don't worry about it, because when we come back and sew in this tail, we can sew it around the center, and that will help close it up even more. So, at this point, you want to bring in your stitch marker because we're going to be working in the round. So we want to be marking every stitch, every first stitch of the round. So if you have to, count back 12 stitches to make sure you're not putting a stitch into that chain one, but actually working the next stitch into the top of the double crochet. So we're going to go into the top of that first double crochet that we made with our first double crochet of round two. And I'm going to mark that stitch as the first of the round. And for round two, you just want to have two double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So going back into that same spot, and with this yarn, sometimes you kind of have to feel for the stitch or pull it apart a little bit just to see where to put your hook. But going right back into that same spot, I'm going to put my second double crochet. And then I will jump to the next stitch, again kind of pulling apart my yarn to see where that stitch is. I will put two double crochets. And I'm just going to work my way around putting two double crochets into every stitch all the way around. All right, I just finished up round two and at this point you should have 24 double crochets around. So I've reached my stitch marker here and I'm going to remove that and I'm going to put 
one double crochet into that stitch that I just removed my marker from and that will be the first stitch of round three and for round three you want to have one double crochet and the next stitch will get two double crochets into the same stitch so one and two and the next stitch will get one double crochet and the next stitch will get two double crochets so I'm just going to keep repeating that pattern all the way around one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the next stitch and once I've made my way all the way around and reach my stitch marker again I will come back on and we'll go on to round four together all right I'm just about at my stitch marker I have one stitch remaining before I reach it and it works out that that last stitch will be an increase stitch so it's two double crochets into that stitch and that is how yours should work out as well where that final stitch ends up with the two double crochets if that's not the case if you've worked your way around and it works out that the one right before the stitch marker only gets one unfortunately somewhere in the round something got a little bit messed up so just look back through there so again I'm going to remove my stitch marker and put one double crochet into that stitch that I just removed the marker from which will be the first stitch of round four I should mention as well that round three at the end of round three it should be that you have 36 double crochets all the way around so on to round four we just did one the next stitch will get one double crochet and the next stitch will be the increased sti stitch or two double crochets into it and then it will be one double crochet over the next two stitches so one into the next stitch one into the next stitch and the next stitch will be two double crochets into the same stitch and that's going to be the pattern all the way around for round four and at the end of round four you should have 48 double crochets all the way around but when I've made my way back over to the stitch marker I'll come back on all right I'm just about at the end of round four I just did an increase so two double crochets and it'll be one into the next one into the next and again it's working out that my final stitch before my stitch marker gets two so I know I did that round correctly and we're going to do one more increase round so I'm going to remove my stitch marker put a double crochet into that stitch that I just removed the marker from and get my stitch marker back on that stitch to mark the first stitch of round five and for round five we want one double crochet over three stitches and then we will increase one double crochet over three stitches and then two double crochets into the next stitch so I just did my first double crochet I'll jump to that next double crochet and put one into it that's two and then double crochet into the next that's three in a row and the next stitch will be the increase stitch or two double crochets into that same stitch again it's one double crochet over the next three stitches 
So there's one, two, and three, and then two double crochets into that next stitch. And again, I'm going to work that pattern all the way around. And at the end of this round, when I've made my way back to the stitch marker, I should have 60 stitches all the way around. But I'll come back on when I've reached my stitch marker. All right, I just finished up the round. Again, finishing with two double crochets into that final stitch before the stitch marker. And at this point, I'm going to bring in my tape measure. And if I measure this circle, it's about six and a half inches wide. So that's going to work fine for me. I will leave some information on screen here just in regards to uh, the sizing, which will work kind of anywhere from teen size to a large adult. So you want to complete as many of these increase rounds as uh, you need to get to the right size for you. So for my head, six and a half inches is going to work completely fine, but you may need to do another round. And if you do, just to make it a little bit wider, if you do on the, this next round, it would be four double crochets in a row and then two into the next, and then four, and then two into the next. Or you may have to do one round less if this ended up too big. Whatever works to get you to the right size as the information shows on screen. And as soon as you've reached the right size, we're just going to start doing rounds of one double crochet into every stitch. Whoops, my stitch marker got a little bit stuck there, but uh, it's going to be one double crochet into every single round. So again, I'll remove that stitch marker. I will put a double crochet into that stitch that I removed my marker from and mark that stitch. And I'm just going to work my way around putting one double crochet into every stitch. So there's not going to be any more increases. It's just one into every stitch all the way around. And when you reach your stitch marker, all you'll do is remove the marker and you're on to the next round. So you'll put a double crochet into the stitch you removed the marker from and remark it. And I'm going to keep working that until my hat is approximately seven inches in height. And I will let you know in just a moment how many rounds that ends up being for me. And uh, I will give it a measure just so if you'd like to make yours the exact same size, you can work up as many rounds uh, as you need to to get it to the same size. So, but for now, just keep working up rounds of double crochets and I will see you in just a moment. All right, I just completed eight rounds total of just the one double crochet into every stitch all the way around. So that was round six through to round 13. I just finished up round 13. And if I bring in my measuring tape here and give that a measure, it's about seven inches. Or you could just put this on your head at this point and mine goes to right above where my ear starts. So that's kind of where you want it to be fitting on you is just right above your ear because we are going to have the ear flaps. So for me, that's seven inches. So you can do more or less rounds to get it to that seven inch measurement. And at this point, I'm going to slip stitch to that first double crochet of the round. So again, put your hook into that first stitch of the round 
and pull the yarn through both that stitch and the loop on top of your hook and I'm going to fasten off. So to fasten off I chain one and cut my yarn and pull that yarn through and pull tight and we are all fastened off. So at this point I want to bring in a second stitch marker and we're going to count some stitches and mark them. So I'm going to start at that stitch that I just slip stitched into and fastened off. So including that stitch I'm going to count to the right 22 stitches and mark that stitch and I'm going to count to the left 22 stitches and mark that stitch. And in both of those counts I'm going to include that stitch in it. So again we start there one and then that's a slip stitch so I'm going to ignore that. Two, three, four, five, Twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two, and I'm going to mark that stitch and I'm going to do the same thing but counting to the left so one because again we're counting that first stitch in the count two three four five Twenty-two, and I'm going to, oops, there it is, mark that stitch. And if we flip this over here, the space between those two stitch markers, this will be the front of the hat, so the opposite side of where you fastened off, that's going to be this will come down to your eyebrow, although we will have an additional line of the fur, but this is going to be the space for your face and we're going to have the ear flaps over here and the neck flap in the back, which is what we're going to start working up. So starting in the stitch that we just marked, counting to the left, I'm going to attach my yarn into that stitch. So I'm just going to flip my hat over because we want to be working in the same direction that we worked up the hat. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker and I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch and attach my yarn. So to do that I'm just going to pull up a loop, drop the tail, And I'm going to chain three, which will count as a double crochet. And I just want to put one double crochet into every stitch all the way around until I reach this stitch marker. So, and I'm just going to work over this tail. You could have actually tied a knot in this stitch just to make sure the yarn doesn't go anywhere. but. I think it will be okay and I'm just going to work over that tail as I work my way around so I don't have to sew it in later. So jumping to the next stitch I will just do a double crochet into it and one double crochet into the next stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch and one into the next and I'm just going to keep working one double crochet into every stitch again until I make it over to this stitch marker and make sure when you're working over where you fastened off remember that final 
what looks like a V up top that the yarn is coming out of is actually a slip stitch. So we're just going to jump right over that. So it will be in the final stitch over here. And then we are going to jump to that stitch over here. So skipping that slip stitch, we're not going to put a double crochet into it. So I'm just going to work my way over to this stitch marker. When I reach it, I will come back on and let you know what I do. All right, I've reached the stitch marker over on this side, so I'm going to remove that and I'm going to place a double crochet into that stitch. So from where we started over on this side where the stitch marker was, and we did double crochets all the way over to this side, you should have 43 double crochets. So at this point I'm going to chain three and that chain three is going to count as a double crochet. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to double crochet my way back over to this side to where we attach that yarn over here. So making sure not to go into that first stitch because remember that chain three counts as a double crochet. So we'll jump to that next stitch and place a double crochet into it. And I'm just going to work my way down the row here with du one double crochet into every stitch and when I make my way back over here, I will come back on and show you what I do over here. All right, I'm at the second last stitch before I'm done this row. So it will be one into the top of that double crochet. And then make sure you're putting one double crochet into the top of that chain three that we started with, because remember that counted as a double crochet. So I'll do one into the top chain of that chain three. And if you aren't quite sure you're using this velvet yarn, I know it's a little bit more difficult to see, you could just count the double crochets that you did for that second row and make sure you're still at 43. So we want five rows total from where we first uh, introduce that yarn again to where we had our stitch marker. We want five rounds or rows total. So that was the second row. I'm going to do three more rows of doing the same thing of chaining three, which will count as the first double crochet, turning my work, and double crocheting my way across, making sure not to go into that first stitch. So jumping to the next double crochet, putting a double crochet into it, and just double crocheting my way back across the row. And when I reach this side here, I will put a double crochet in the top chain of that chain three, chain three, turn my work, double crochet my way uh, back across until I have five round or rows total. So I have two complete. I'm working on my third. I'll finish up the third and do two more as well. All right, I'm just coming to the end of the fifth row of the ear and back of your neck covering portion. So I just have one more double crochet to do, which I will put in the top of that final chain three, like so. And we're going to move on to, I guess you could call it the chin flap portion. So for that, again, we're going to chain three, turn our work, and we're gonna work on the one on this side, and then we will move over to this other side and add one over there. But for now, we'll turn our work, and that chain three is going to count as the first double crochet, and we want to have one double crochet in the first 11 stitches. So that was one. I'll jump to that next one, two, three, four, 
or five. And I'll be back on in just a moment when I have 11 in a row. All right, I have 11 double crochets over the first 11 stitches and I'm going to double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So what that does is turn these two stitches into just one stitch. So to do that, we yarn over, go into that next stitch or the first of the two, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. And then we're going to yarn over again and jump into that next double crochet or the second of the two, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through those final three loops on your hook. And that was a double crochet two together. So I'm going to chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to double crochet two together over these first two stitches here. So that includes this one because that chain one does not count as a stitch or anything. It'll be over those first two stitches. So again, we yarn over, go into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. And then we yarn over and go into the second stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops on your hook. And I'm just going to grab a little more yarn here. Then we yarn over and pull through those final three loops on our hook. So that was a double crochet two together over those first two stitches. And we're going to do one double crochet in the final 10 stitches here. You should have 10 remaining and we're just going to do one double crochet into each of those 10 stitches. So making sure we're not going into that stitch that the double crochet two together is coming out of. We're jumping to the next one and it's just one double crochet into each of the remaining of these 10 stitches. And once I have that all done, I'll come back on and we'll go on to the next row together. Great, I've made it over to this side. So again, I'm going to chain three and turn my work and that will count as the first double crochet. And then I'm, I want nine double crochets in a row for this row. So that was the first one. Jump to the next one. There's two, three, four, five. It should just get you to where you have two stitches remaining. I believe it's one more, yeah. So that was nine in a row, and then I have two stitches remaining. I have that double crochet two together from the previous row, and then just that, that uh, double crochet there. So we want to double crochet two together over these final two stitches, so just like we did previously. Oops, there we go. And that will complete this row. And for the next two rows, we just want to have one double crochet in each stitch across. So we'll just chain three, turn our work. That will count as the first one, jump to the next one and double crochet our way across. So we're going to do that for this row and for the next row. So when I make it to this end, I will chain three, turn my work and double crochet my way back over here. So after I've done the next two rows, 
This is the first one here, so I'll complete this one. And the next one, after I've completed those two rows, I will come back on and show you how to do the next row. All right, I just finished the two rows and you should have 10 double crochets across at this point for these last two rows. So for the next row, we're going to chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to turn our work and we're going to double crochet two together over the first two stitches here. So just like we've been doing, we will double crochet two together over those first two stitches. And then we're going to double crochet our way across until we have two stitches remaining. So it should be one double crochet in the next six stitches. And I'll just stay on here as I work my way across. And I have one more to do, there we go. And I have two remaining, pull out some more yarn. And I'm going to do a double crochet two together or a decrease, however you want to call it, over these final two stitches. So the first one will be that double crochet and then the final one will be in the top chain of that chain three from the previous row. Like so. There we go. And we only have one more row for this uh, flap down here. So to do that, we're going to chain one. Again, that chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to turn our work. We're going to double crochet two together over the first two stitches. And then we're going to do a double crochet in the next four stitches, which will get us to having two stitches remaining. So just one double crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And I should have two remaining, which I do. So I will double crochet two together over those two stitches. And that is it for this side. So I'm going to fasten off at this point. I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn, pull that yarn through, and pull tight. And there's the one side complete. So we're going to jump to the other side and work on what we just did down here over on this side. So to do that, we're going to turn our work. So this is the front of our work that I'm looking at. I'm just going to turn my work. So I'm looking at the inside of the hat here over on this edge because we're gonna be working in this direction. So I want to attach my yarn in the 13th stitch from the left here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So I will attach my yarn into that stitch by pulling a loop through. Again, you can feel free to tie that just to make sure that it's 
secure. In fact, I'll, I'll do that on this one just to show you. Some Usually I do actually do this. So I just pulled through the end there and I'm just going to tie it. I typically do a double knot just to be extra safe. And then I insert my hook back into that stitch and drop the tail there and pull up a loop like so. And we're ready to work on row one of this side. So it's essentially kind of, I guess the opposite of what we did over on this side because we're starting on the inner portion of the hat whereas over here we started on that side. So I'll show you again quickly. On this side we're going to double crochet two together over the first two stitches. So we'll chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. And we will double crochet two together over these first two stitches. And I'm just working over this tail so I don't have to sew it in later. Like so. And we're going to do one double crochet in the final 11 stitches. You should have 11 stitches remaining. And we're going to put one double crochet into each one of those 11 stitches. So once I've completed that, I'll come back on and we'll go on to the next row together. All right, I'm just doing my final double crochet of this row, the first row of the chin flap. And you should have 12 double crochets across. That includes that initial double crochet two together. So for row two of this part, we are going to chain three, which counts as the first double crochet. We're going to turn our work and we're going to double crochet our way across until we have two stitches remaining. So jumping to that next stitch and doing a double crochet and it will be one double crochet in the first 10 stitches and that should leave you with two stitches at the end here that we're going to decrease over but I'll come back on when I get to that point. Right, I have two stitches remaining so I'm going to decrease over those two stitches like so and for the third row, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and I'm going to decrease over the first two stitches. And then you should have nine stitches remaining. So I'm just going to put one double crochet into each of these nine stitches. Okay, I've made my way over to this side with double crochets. And at this point, we're going to do our two rows of just one double crochet into every stitch. So chaining three, that's gonna count as the first double crochet of the row. And just like we've been doing, jumping to that next stitch and double crocheting into every stitch. And when you make it to this side, we're going to again chain three, turn our work, and double crochet our way back. So after I have my two rows complete of just one double crochet into every stitch, I will come back on and we will go on to the final two rows of this section together. All right, I just finished up my two rows of one double crochet into each stitch. From here, I'm gonna chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. I'm going to double crochet two together over the first two stitches. And then I'm going to double crochet in every stitch 
until I have two stitches remaining. So just one into every stitch here. And when you have two stitches remaining, we're going to double crochet two together over those two stitches. So I have two remaining, and that includes that one, and the chain three there, and I'm going to decrease over those two stitches. Sometimes the top of the chain three can be kind of tricky to get your hook through if you do it tight like me. There we go. And for the final row of this part, we are going to chain one. It doesn't count as a stitch. It's a, essentially the exact same as the row we just did. So we're going to decrease over the first two stitches and then one double crochet until you have two stitches remaining. So it should be one, oh, my yarn's getting a little tangled up here. It should be one double crochet until, or sorry, over the next four stitches after your decrease and then you should have two remaining. So I will see you once I do the four double crochets here and decrease over the final two stitches. I will come back on and we will go on to working around the hat and cleaning up all of the edges. Okay, I just finished up that final double crochet two together and from here we want to chain one and turn our work and we're going to do a round of single crochets around the entire hat. So for some of the hat it's going to be easy to see where your stitches go. For example along the bottom of this uh, chin part here. But when you're working up the sides it's going to be more difficult to see where to put your hook because we're not actually working in into any specific stitches. So I'll just get to that point and show you how I work it out. So again, just going into every stitch along the bottom here. And this part is easy to see where those stitches are. And when you get to the corner stitch, so I'm at the corner stitch over here, I want to put three single crochets total into that stitch. And that will just help us kind of turn the corner here. So now we're going to work up this side. And again, there's no specific place to put your hook. We're kind of working into the sides of stitches. So for each row of double crochets, you can see it's kind of hard to see, but each one of these rows of double crochets, you want to put two single crochets into the end of each of those rows. And it's just kind of wherever your, your hook will fit into. So we have our first row of double crochets, just wherever I can fit my hook into, I'm going to put two single crochets. And again, we're at the next row, just kind of poking my hook through. I will put two single crochets at the end of that row. And we are at another row, you can tell, because it's that chain three. So just going into the side of that chain, I will put one. And then into a different chain, I will put my second. So I'm just going to continue working down here, putting two single crochets at the end of each one of these rows. And when I get to the corner where we're back at the hat portion, I'll come back on. I've made it to the corner here. 
I've done two at the end of each row and we're not going to put three into this corner because it just kind of flows into these stitches at the bottom of the hat nicely. We'll just keep working our way around and again across here it's going to be easy to see where to put those stitches so you can see there's this first double crochet here so I'll go into that one and then just work my way across putting one single crochet into each of these uh, double crochets. And when I make it over to this side here, get my yarn out of the way, again I'm not going to put three into the corner, I'm just going to work single crochets up until this final one in the corner and then again I will plan to put two at the end of each of these rows where it's not quite as easy to see where to put your stitches and when I make my way up here so I'm going to finish the bottom of the hat and do up this side I'll come back on when I make it to this corner. Alright I'm up at the corner stitch and I just thought I'd mention don't worry at all about making sure it's perfect especially if you're using this yarn you're not even going to see it at all it's just meant to, to uh, not only clean up the edges a little bit but just give us nice stitches to work that fur yarn into because the fur yarn is even a little bit more difficult to use. So I just wanted a round of stitches that will uh, make it easy for me to see where to put that fur yarn when I'm working with that. So at so again, just don't stress about making sure it's exactly the same over here and over here and all that kind of thing. But at this corner, we're going to once again put three single crochets into that corner stitch and again we're at a part here where it's easier to see the stitches so just putting three into that corner stitch and then I'm going to work my way over here putting one single crochet into every stitch and I'm working over this tail so I don't have to sew it in later And when you get to the stitch over on this corner, right here, we're going to put three single crochets into that stitch. One, two, and three. And then we're going to, I'll flip my hat over at this point, work our way around the front of the hat and it's the exact same thing. So again I'm going to do single crochets up this edge and once again it's not perfect stitches so just plan for two at the end of each row wherever your hook will fit. Again doing nothing different in this corner just continuing your way across these obvious stitches Again, working your way back down this side, two single crochets at the end of each row. And when you make your way, I'll, I'll meet back with you when I've made my way. So I'm going to do down here, across the front of the hat here, up this side. And when I make my way to this corner, I'll come back on. All right, I'm just about at the corner here. I'm just completing my final single crochet here. So I did the final two for that final row of double crochets and you should be back where you started. So that's the first single crochet that we did when we started working our way around. So into that stitch that that first single crochet is in, I'm going to add two more single crochets into that same stitch that that first one we made when we started the round of single crochets in there. And then I'm going to slip stitch to that first single crochet that we made. Just slip stitching it 
right into it like so and we're going to fasten off because we're done with this yarn here and pull that through and if we look at our hat at this point I'll turn it over so I'm looking at the right side you can see all of these edges have been cleaned up. So at this point we want to bring in our fur yarn because we're going to go do our round with the fur. All right, I've brought in the color that I'm going to use. So right now I'm looking at the right side of the hat. You can tell because this is the shorter side. That's for your neck in the back. So I'm going to turn my hat over so I'm looking at the back of the hat. And I'm actually going to flip it this way because I'm going to be working my stitches in that direction. So the right side of the stitches are showing and I'm going to bring in my fur yarn and in just any one of the stitches on the back of the hat, it really doesn't matter. You could even start in a corner. This part doesn't matter, but I'm just going to pick a stitch here and insert my yarn into that stitch into the single crochet. So I'm now working into the single crochets that we just made. And I'm going to pull that through. And again, I may as well tie it just to be safe. So I will just tie this fur yarn in a knot and I will do it two times like so. And then I'm going to insert my hook back into that same stitch and pull up a loop. And this is going to be extra hard to see, but because we did that round of single crochets, again, it's going to be a lot easier now that we have those stitches to work into. So I'm going to chain three which will count as my first double crochet. And I'm just going to work my way around in every single single crochet all the way around the entire hat. I'm going to work one double crochet into it. So I'm no longer gonna be putting three in the corners. It's just working one into every stitch all the way around the entire hat so just jumping to that next stitch again, I'm going to work over this tail just to make it easier later, have less ends to sew in and work a double crochet. And jumping to the next stitch, work a double crochet. It's just going to be one round of these double crochets. So don't worry about having to work over this again. I know that would be even more difficult trying to see these stitches, but it's just this one round. So it's not too difficult to work with this fur at all. So again, I'm just going to double crochet into all these stitches, one into every stitch when I make it over here, just working my way down this side, around the front of the hat, and then I would come up this side over here, over these stitches, down this side, and I will come back on when I'm back to over here. All right, I've made my way all the way around the entire hat, and at this point, I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three, and Again, it can be a little bit tricky, but if you just kind of feel around, you'll be able to feel that top chain three, or top of the chain three, and I'm gonna go right into it. There we go, with a slip stitch. And I'm going to fasten off at this point. So to fasten off, I cut my yarn, and pull it through that chain one and pull tight. And we're all fastened off. And at this point, I'm going to go around and sew in any of the remaining tails. So you can kind of see what it's looking like here. And I'm just gonna go around and sew in any of those loose ends. I will show you, I did mention when we first started the hat, 
that if you sew this around, you can close that up a little bit more. So I'll just show you how I do that. So I'm on the inside of the hat and I'll bring in my yarn needle and get that attached. There we go. And if you just sew it around the center stitches here, so just going through a couple at a time, pulling that through, a couple more, pulling it through. So I'm just working around that center gap there. And there we go. And then you pull it through. And once you've done it around a couple times, if you pull that, you can see that's going to shut it up, shut that gap to where there's no opening. So I'll just cut that now because it's all sewn in. And I just thought I'd mention as well, when you're sewing in these fur tails, all I do is kind of push all the stitches up. And I just kind of catched the bottom of these stitches here, like so, kind of working my way along. And then I pull that through. And then I'll work a couple more. The good news is you don't see this part very easily, so just do your best. But again, just kind of working my way along the bottom of the stitches catching those loops and then pulling it through and that's how I am sewing in those fur tails this one I already did and there you go and it's hidden all right I got all of my ends sewn in on both of my hats here it's kind of hard to see them all on camera but here's the white and the pink one and then here's the one I just made on camera. So I think they turned out very nice. They're very soft and warm and I'm excited to wear them. I think it turned out really good. So I hope you're happy with how your hat turned out. Oops, still have a little tail there that I'm gonna have to <laughs> throw out but I hope you're happy with how your hat turned out and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!